what is up everybody and welcome back to another episode of History Behind the Horror. So today's video we're going back to the asylum from Outlast 1 to talk about not necessarily the main antagonist of the game but what we like to call patience or the variance. If you do enjoy this video and you would like to see more Outlast 2 or Outlast 1 content make sure you put it in the comments what you want to see next. Give me a like to let me know that you guys enjoy this series and also make sure you share it. And as always I hope you guys enjoy the video. The phrase variance is a derogatory term frequently used by Murkoff personnel which denotes the patient's heavily disfigured and mutilated appearances due to a number of failed experiments that were conducted on them. This term was first used by Stephenson within the first game when Miles encountered him on the brink of death. <coughs> they killed us. They caught out. The variance. You can't fight them. You have to hide. You can unlock the main doors. Run security control. You have to get the fuck out of this terrible place. Variants are the results of the exposure of patients from Mount Massive Asylum to the morphogenic engine created by former Nazi scientist Dr. Rudolf Warnick. The after effects of the therapy altered their minds and provoked physical deformities. The outcomes of those affected can't be determined, thus giving those afflicted the name variants. Most of the variants have pale skin and mutilations, likely having to do with the experiments they were once exposed to. They differ in ways. While some are thin and weak, others are massive and brutally strong, such as Chris Walker, who is a commonly seen variant in the first game. Their clothing ranges from standard psychiatric attire to ripped and torn shorts. The twins, however, are naked. There are some variants that are more aware of their surroundings, an example being the variant in the sewer who questions whether Warnick is deceased, and the pyromaniac variant in the cafeteria in the male ward who explains that he would rather die than stay in the asylum, and points miles towards the exit. All of it. Murkoff took so much from us, used us, turned us into these things because nobody cares about a few forgotten lunatics. So let it burn. Burn the whole goddamn thing down. Get out. What a way to get out of the kitchen. There are also variants who are not permanently hostile and attack only if the player moves into close proximity. Variants who assist or hinder the player with cryptic hints or stories, and variants who ignore the player completely. For the most part, the humanity of some of the variants seem to have left them at some stage during their torture, turning into sadistic, cruel, and ruthless pursuers. Others tend to become terrified, hiding under beds, crawling away after attacking. Others seem prone to self-harm, one banging his head on a wall in different places, and a few that are slightly helpful. Some variants seem to be followers of Father Martin. Among their abilities is their physical strength and stamina, being able to smash doors, pull out organs, destroy reinforced glass, and chase after victims. Even though most of them act in unexpected ways, many are capable of high reasoning, proven when they execute plans such as tracking down Miles' hiding spots and listening for sound. Some of them even set up ambushes. Such variants include Richard Traeger and the Twins, who opt to opening and closing doors rather than bashing them down like other variants such as Chris Walker. The blindfolded variant is a non-hostile variant that's first encountered in the prison block. He is blindfolded and gagged by bandages and bound in a straitjacket, rendering him incapable of physical assault and will simply follow Miles as he wanders around a cell block. He will often comment on how Miles looks silky and complains about an itch, among other disjointed phrases. A variant in the hospital appears with a similar blindfold and gag and speaks the same dialogue. The brain damage variant is among the first variants encountered in the prison block. 
he is a non-hostile and will neglect Miles' presence. Proceeding to wander towards walls in the cell ward and repeatedly slamming his forehead against it, leaving bloodstains on the surface. He often complains about hearing voices and a lack of sleep while claiming that they're in his blood and want to get out. A variant appears in the hospital that performs similar actions upon a pair of doors. A variant, formerly a Murkoff executive, is encountered in the male ward, following the scene where Traeger removes Miles' fingers and leaves him in the restrooms. When approached, the patient will awaken and explain himself, before calling Traeger, forcing Miles to hide. Upon entering, Traeger and the hostage converse before Traeger quickly murders him with a pair of gutter shears. A variant appears briefly during the return to the administration block. When Miles meets him, he'll reveal that Father Martin has sent him and instructs Miles to find a key in the theater room. During the return to the administration block, a piano can be heard by Miles in a distant section of the building. As Miles continues, the music will slowly grow louder until he passes a corridor and passes a border of door. The music will abruptly stop and the pianist will approach the door, shaking his head in disapproval before wandering out of view. The song the pianist plays is featured in the official Outlast soundtrack as Someone Playing Piano. There are a lot of people that say Outlast 1 is better than Outlast 2, and there are a lot of people that say Outlast 2 is better than Outlast 1. Then we have the section of people that say that we, the ones who like Outlast 1 better, are just being fanboys, and Outlast 2 is the more superior game. Now, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but when it comes to literally which game is better and had a better story and more content, it was Outlast 1, even before the DLC. Outlast 1 had main antagonists, different antagonists on different parts of the building that felt like boss battles. Every section we go into the game, at the end of that section there was always an Eddie, there's always a Frank Monera or uh, a Chris Walker or a Traeger and we had to find ways to get around these people. Outlast 2 doesn't really deliver on that at all. We have the same people we had uh, the Martha girl, or Marta, whatever y'all want to call her. Uh, then we had mainly Father, whatever the other, the, I can't remember his name right now, the Father dude that was like the knockoff Father Martin. And we had Nick and Laird, Jessica and them. They seemed like they wasn't really as important or special as Outlast 1 characters. Even besides the main antagonist, we still had the side variants that had some personality to them, like Traeger's Hostage, or any other kind of variant in the game that wasn't just a, uh, a recycled 
palette of a character just running around like the farmers in our last two they were just running around and looking all the same they had nothing unique about them one sat in the chair one one stalks a barn another person walks the, the, the cornfields it was really nothing unique more than outlast one when it came to their variants they put a lot of thought and a lot of love in outlast one which made that game in my opinion so much fun i mean people call me people say i fanboy over it but when you look at the hard facts outlast one is just a better game and i miss corridors or being in a building more than being in an open field. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna turn this into a discussion video about which better Outlast 1 or Outlast 2. I'm gonna say that for another video. Got some special coming up for that soon. But just wanna give people an insight of how in depth this game was compared to the second one. This game was really cool and I really love it. And this will be one of my favorite, of all time favorite horror games I've played all my life. So. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching history, another episode of History Behind the Horror. If you did enjoy it, please give this video a like and share it. It lets me know if you guys want to see more. If you want to see more Outlast content, whether it be Outlast 1 or 2, make sure you put it in the comment section so I know exactly what you want to see. And now I'll try to work on it as soon as possible. Also, if you have some non-horror characters, please put them in the comment section too. Because I'm going to be doing some of those coming up very, 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 very soon. So, with that being said, I appreciate you guys watching. And I will see you on the next episode of History Behind the World.